Hi everyone, Mary and Espresso Press Design. A bonus video this week. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, redo this for a long time, and I finally have the time to do it. So, um, it's August 21st, Wednesday, and we're going to do some wax paper lamination. I'm giving it a new title <laughs> so that uh, people, a better title, hopefully, so that people um, understand it more clearly. So, well over a year ago, I can't remember when I did this, but it's well over a year, probably a year and a half. I did these wax paper lamination using glue and I found it hard to believe it would last but it has so is that gorgeous I um, used all different types of glues um, Pretty sure I use school glue, my Linaco glue, um, Fabri-Tac, wait, what is that? Tacky glue. But I always wondered if it would work with just a regular glue stick. I might have tried a glue stick and I didn't think it worked, but it does. So, um, you will need any type of glue stick. These ones that I did yesterday, I did with cheap school glue stick because my other glue stick was upstairs and I didn't feel like going up to get it. So you'll need a glue stick. You'll need your little images. I'm also going to do one for you on extremely fragile paper. You'll need some wax paper. I like to do mine on packaging, preferably with a white back, so I don't have to um, cover the back. And your little, whatever little images you want to use. I have some birds and some flowers, leaves, things like that. I thought I would just continue with the theme. I even did a napkin. And on the back I put the, um, sometimes it's second ply, sometimes it's the third ply. This one happened to be the third ply. I put the, that on the back. And the uh, vibrant image on the front. So I did all these yesterday, and I did these little ones this morning, put some little tabs on them, didn't go around the edges or anything, just, just put some little tabs. So you'll need your little images, whatever you want to laminate. Um, you'll need some of your old paper, so we can do that, and uh, that won't be going anywhere. So I have some old paper here. I have this in case I have time to do another one. This is from my grade school days, and it is extremely fragile. I'm not going to reveal, I don't even know what year, but I am 62, so you can guess how old that might be. So okay, you'll need that, and you will need a Sizzix. You cannot apply enough pressure with a roller or something to make sure it's going to actually Faux laminate. <laughs> so 
yeah, you'll definitely need a Sizzix, whether anyone has ever tried a pasta maker or not, I don't know. I don't know if that would put enough pressure or not, but that might be an option if you want to try it. So, I've got my Sizzix. I'm not putting my Sizzix on camera because my table is crowded, but it's right next to me, and I'll be able to get back here quickly. So I have a few smaller pieces of packaging here. And I'm just going to choose what fits. I'll do that one. It's a little too big. Okay, that'll work probably maybe a little too wide. Let me see if there's one here smaller. Okay. That little leaf will work, I think, on that small piece. So, This is, this was one of my biggest surprises of craft exploring, craft exploring. So I'm just going to take, I'll do this one with the school glow. don't want a ton of glue on there because you have to wait until it absolutely dries before you run it through the press or I'll tell you what's going to happen here in a second I'll try to show you actually Just getting off the excess glue because I'm going to um, I'm going to press this first just to make my, sure my image is nicely embedded because I had one where the corner came up already and not the wax paper just the corner so I'm pressing this image into this packaging just to make sure it's nice and secure first and I'm using a crappy plates by the way Okay, so now that's nice, nicely embedded in there. So I'm going to go over it again. And I'm going to run it through when it's not dry. And I'm going to try to make it back here to show you what happens. You don't need a lot of glue. But just make sure you get get the corners as usual. I press it down a little bit at first. So I'm going to run this through and it's probably too wet to adhere. And this is why you really have to let things dry at least 95% which was always true with the other glues. I didn't think it would matter so much with glue stick, but it does. So just let me, yeah, see it, it's too wet. I got a wrinkle. 
and it's not going to stick. So you absolutely have to wait on that wrinkle will press right out. And I'm just going to rub it a little bit, rub it out a little bit. And then I'm going to try, I'm going to let this sit here for hopefully at least four or five minutes. So during that, I'm going to um, show you how to do the uh, fragile paper. because I didn't want to uh, rub the glue stick on fragile paper because if it's really fragile, even doing that might be too much. So this is what I did with the paper. I just got a back and a front. I didn't care if there was a little a little edge. I tried to keep my torn edges. So I intentionally left a little edge around mine. So let me just cut this excess off. And then, and then, and then, let me show you what else I did. But I didn't have. I was trying to make an envelope, but it was too fragile. I also did um, a napkin on wax paper. And there's the front. And there's the back. <laughs> but I didn't make anything with it yet, and I didn't try, have time to try it again. So for the fragile paper, what I did was I put the glue on the wax paper. And I carefully place my image or my book page there. And then make sure it was nice and adhered. And then Did the other side. So you can do this with any digital, whatever, any image. But this is a way to um, protect your fragile pieces. And then that's pretty much all that took. So I'm going to let this dry. And hope this one is dry enough where it will not peel up. Still feels a tad cool. Let's hope. We'll see. And those wrinkles will press right out, so I'm not really worried about it. If you need a um, shim, use a shim. I'm just using this cardboard to protect my backing from this 
all this texture on this crappy Sizzix plate. it did. Let me do it again. I have one little corner. Okay, I didn't get any, I didn't get any slip sliding. Slips, that slips, the glue being wet and the sliding in your press is what's causing those bubbles or wrinkles and rippling. That's telling you it's not dry enough. Okay. I didn't protect my back too well on that one, but I'm pretty sure that one's good. So then, I just take my trimmer, and try to square up my image if it's crooked, which it is. like a good edge. My my first ones I die cut so I could get all those shapes and things. But this time I didn't do that. I just just use my fancy corner punch for the most part. Okay. Don't feel any peeling. Cut that off. get a corner on there. <clears throat> I think I'll use this one. Okay, there's one. And then took my metallic oil based pen deco color from Uchida. Hopefully I said that right. Whoops. And then I went outside the line. I wrote rough edge there. And then I just went around. And put a little edge. not. Okay, got it. So there we go. There's one. So now I'm going to run this through the press and get it nice and secure. This one, I don't feel any coolness at all. So hopefully it's dry. And I'm going to do the same thing. And then 
again. I'm going to see if I can get a tear edge there with my decorator scissors or something. Okay, I'm sure that's not going anywhere. Let me see what I have here. Oh, where's my brown? Let me see if these will cut through wax paper. I'm not quite sure if they will. Oh, they seem to be. You're not perfect. But I'm just going to try to get a little, a nice little edge here. So this is kind of floating in there. It's not going very well. Let me try a tear. Oh, where's my tear? Okay. Let's see how that goes. Terry very well either. <gasps> well, that tore. <laughs> okay, well, that's authentic. Okay, um, let me try my postage stamp edge here and see what happens. Well, that's working better. There. I'll take a little more off of there. Oh, geez, now I tore that corner. Okay, maybe there's a little glue in there and it's sticking. Okay, so there's that one. Do have a little bubble. I could run that through again just to get all those out. But I'm quite sure that's probably not going to ever go anywhere. I mean, I'll have to test this out myself. And I definitely wouldn't. I'll just keep these lying around for a few months, same as the other ones. And if the, I don't see any degradation in a month or so, they probably aren't going anywhere. So that is ten times easier than using glue and waiting for it to dry. Where are we? 25. I can probably do another one here. Um, I do have another. Where's my images? I'll do two. I'll fit two on here. Okay, maybe I'll do that bird. No. No. Okay, I'm going back to the school glue. Just to show you that you don't need any special equipment. 
except for the Sizzix. <laughs> I can't believe this is even so fresh. This is from my daughter's earlier school days. She's had her first class today. I'm not sure what her schedule is. I'll ask her here in a minute as soon as I get back upstairs. Okay. Let me just get that excess glue off there so I don't have any sticking in the press of the packaging. And then if I have time, I'll show you this one. It just makes a protect, protective finish with no brush marks. So I'm just running my images through so that they are nice. Nicely embedded in the packaging as well. If you ever want to um, make your own, I do that to master boards and everything because it really embeds the image there and then you don't have to worry about it <coughs> going anywhere. Here's my other piece of I'll just cut this in half. Boy, I go through the wax paper. I need my own roll down here. Okay. Do the school glue again. Actually, the one I liked the least was the most expensive. I don't, I know my Scotch Create would work, but this Craft Bond, it actually probably took the longest to get it to work right. This one seemed to dry the fastest. Okay. See, you don't need a lot. I'm just going to give it a preliminary roll out here. I should have prepared another one while I'm it was so I could show you that glue trick. Well, that's what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting for this to dry completely. I'm going to show you the other one. Do I have another piece of packaging? Yes, I do. Okay, let me just do this one. Okay, I hope I remember how to do this. So Going to use the craft bond. 
just because I'm putting white glue on top. Should have a magazine here too. Okay. this through and a piece of wax paper already on there okay I'm gonna run this through <clears throat> so and then I'm just gonna use crappy school glue And I can't guarantee it will do this to every image. It was just a happy accident. Okay, so I'm going to get a magazine in case I have a glue squirt. So you just take your image. What this does is it puts a uh, coating of glue on top and you let it dry completely and it really makes your colors vibrant and it um, gives it a protective coating with no brush marks As you can see, I'm just using Elmer's school glue. I'm just going to rub it around there. Okay. And then Take another piece of wax paper roll it out I think I had too much glue roll it out And then peel it off and just let it dry completely probably like hours <laughs> and then you'll have a smooth coating on there and I think I did put too much glue because I see a little puddle so don't do that and then that will give you this thing here so, okay, there's how much glue I took off. Just going to toss that. See if this is dry enough, which it does hopefully appear to be dry. So I'm going to press this last one and cut it out, and then that will be it. That I can think of and you can decorate these however you like or leave them or cut them out with die cuts and they are just so um, they look very antique and um, they make nice little tags. I put them on cards. I've used them for embellishments. It's, I know I have, it seems like I have quite a few left, but I made a lot. Okay, I think that worked.
don't see any bubbles or anything. Well, I do see one little bubble there. No, actually that's that's in the image. <laughs> okay, let me get these cut out. Close enough. I see a little, little packaging on there. Okay. Oh, that's good. square enough. No, I don't feel any lifting, but I do feel a bubble. So I'm going to run this one through the press again. Feel a little bubble right there, maybe. Oh no, actually I, I can just press that out. It's not that big. You do see a bubble. I see a little bubbling on the edge. Let me try to press it again. That way I can make sure it's nice and secure. So don't don't worry if you have to press it again. I've had to do that a couple times. And I tried one, one or two, where I um, crumpled the wax paper because I wanted to, I got to experiment with this some more. I crumpled the wax paper because I wanted it to see if I could get it to look like crackler. Is that how you say that? And then I realized I was covering too much of my little bird's face. So that's how my faux crackler, is that how you say it? Um, I don't know if you can see that. That's how that turned out which I think is lovely for certain images. Probably work better with some better than others. Okay, so there is the new ones. And piece of paper here.
use the new ones. I'm not going to um, go around the edge of all of them. There is the newest fragile paper, which I made it, tried to make it floating. And there is the protective glue coat. Now that's going to dry matte. It's not going to stay shiny. It's just going to be there. <laughs> so I wish I would have had two images so I could show you the difference between the dull and the more vibrant, but I should have had two identical images to show you that. So, okay, let me just um, give you a recap. You can use glue stick, any type of glue stick. Um, packaging. I like packaging. You could use cardstock, scrapbook paper, folder, whatever. Um, your images, your press, and most importantly, uh, make sure it's dry before you run it through the press. And then everything should come out fine. And that is your wax paper lamination. Okay, everyone. I hope this is a better version of this video and you, I explained everything clearly, but any questions, just ask in the comments and I'll try to answer. Thanks for your time. Bye.